Welcome to Battle World, super fun for boys and girls. Where dinosaurs get beat up by Hulk. And Steve Rogers is a, a, something rhymes with Hulks. Um, it's, it's a giant, giant size little marvel of Avengers versus <laughs> X-Men. Hello welcome. again, and welcome to the Comics Online Podcast, Season 15, Episode 45. You might be wondering, what happened to 44? It was last week at Wizard World Richmond. Uh, if you didn't see the video, that's because it's only audio. You can find it on iTunes. So, Troy, this is part one. This is part one. This is the part where we play ping pong. No, 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 this no. is not that. No, no, billiards. I'm sorry, billiards. Uh, no, I, I, instead, though, this week, we should talk about our top five comics. Well, yes, we should actually talk about our top five comics. So as we will go into detail about uh, when, we, when we get to part two, we're going to go into much detail as to what we saw at Wizard World Richmond 2015. But one thing that I got to talk about comic-wise, something that debuted there, a comic book that debuted there, and that is Sentinel. This is a self-published book, Sentinel Number no. 1 by Alana Ross. And you're thinking, oh, who's this Alana Ross? Well, she is a 15-year-old local girl who both wrote and uh, did all the art on this book. And it is, you know, you, you, get the, you get a kid who is producing, normally, you get a kid who's producing their own work, you know, and they wrote and draw something, and you think, well, it's cute, but it's dumb. Or the art sucks. Neither one is true with this. It's 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 really amazing. I want to read the second issue already. I read it on the way back in the car, and it's fantastic. I can't wait to see more from from Alana. Well, uh, we we met her and her father, and uh, you know you know he's the self admitted uh, you know financier of, of this. You know of he's shelling out the money for the printing, shelling out the money for the booth, um, but. It's beautiful. I'm 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 hooked. I, I you know I'm I'm not really into uh, uh, the uh, anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphics, right? You know that's not my style. But I like this. I like the story and I like the art. So uh, so I'm into it. Can't wait until issue two. Yeah. Well, I've been primed certainly by uh, Kurt Busiek's uh, Autumn Lands Tooth and Claw. So. Oh, that's I'm, true. Yeah. I'm that, giving, that that kind of breaks the mold, though. Really. I'm I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, yeah, I gotta I gotta give this a go. So is this my copy here, Kevin? Uh, yes. Oh, it, it is you. now. Oh, thank you so very much. It is now, Alon. I'm gonna need another one. Um, anyhow, uh, on to our top five. Oh, well, uh, Miss Kayla here has already grabbed the first on your stack. Sure. So. She is uh, holding up. Marvel zombie that I am. Uh, Ultimate End, number four. Yet, not shockingly, uh, we've got uh, yet another in the Secret Wars franchise that I am so thrilled with. Um, and, of course, uh, Ultimate End. I didn't. I thought Ultimate End was just going to be a single issue. It no. was just going to be like the... No. Uh, oh, yeah, show them that. The last days. Ooh, that's beautiful. Um, you know, this tells us what happened to the rest of the Ultimate Universe. And we needed to know that. It, it, yeah. There's a lot of story that has not unfolded yet that takes us from the end of the Avengers into the beginning of Secret Wars. Yeah, and and, and this way we actually get a bit of, uh, oh, of, yeah. of ending rather than, no, I'm sorry, they were all destroyed. They, they, you know, they were disintegrated or something like that, the entire world, except for a handful of characters that you know, fans particularly liked. Uh, the characters who were able to get on that lifeboat and save themselves. Right. Or be saved if they didn't actually save themselves. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, moving on to point two, <coughs> Spider oh. Island. Um, as a coughing, yeah. As our folks know, uh, I'm a big fan of the Spider books, and Spider Island is no exception here. We've got Spider Island number. What number is this? Number two. Number two. Thanks, number two. Mar th 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 uh, you're not Mark. Mark's over there. Yeah, he's over he's, there. He's waving his fingers. Hi, Mark. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming with us to Wizard World. That was really helpful. And um, yeah, Spider Island's good. Um, 
nothing much to say. We're gonna we're gonna rush through this a bit, but uh, hopefully we'll give you enough flavor to uh, whet your appetite for this week's comics. Yeah, well, moving right on to uh, issue Infinity number three. Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. So, uh, have you enjoyed the the Infinity Gauntlet story in the in uh, the Secret Wars? You know, I have. Uh, I, I think it's not what people were thinking it was going to be. You know, all Thanos and Infinity yeah. Stones and that's what I was and everything. Uh, no, no, it really isn't. But the introduction of uh, of the Nova family mm-hmm. that was that was touching and good. Like I said, that first issue probably could have could have been compressed into four into four pages. But aside from that, solid story. And you know, I, I want to follow up. I want to find. Uh, I appreciated the setup. You know, since yeah. it wasn't going to be what a lot of people thought it was, having an expansion, getting more into the world, this particular domain. Sure. I think that made it a little more palatable. I was just checking to see if it was Ben. But no. <laughs> Dustin Weaver. Um, my next pick, Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. Now, uh, longtime fans of Comics Online will know that I was very upset when uh, our, uh, you know, uh, our Fuhrer, um, uh, Joe Quesada, went and, and destroyed um, uh, the, uh, the, the sanctity of of uh, Peter and Mary Jane's uh, marriage and uh, and and just basically everything they were about, uh, it just pissed me off. And so I, you know, I was very angry about it and didn't read any any Spider Man for a long time. Even though there was a lot of great stories, I was just angry because you know, hey, why did you have to reboot it? Anyway, this is uh, this is a little section of the Battle World where none of that happened and everybody's uh, happy again. Now, did did you read the the, the Briefort Manifesto? Did you read the, the end of Brand New Day? Did you come to understand? I did, and I didn't. And I was. I did not agree with him. <sighs> I did not agree with him. I didn't agree with Casada. You know who I agreed with uh, is uh, Straczynski, who was like. I'm not with these guys. <laughs> you know, that's 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 an abbreviation of what, you know, that's what's what I took away from what he was saying. Um, anyway, oh, is that my, is that all of mine? There are more secret wars, but but I'm not going to show you. There's a, there there are like five other secret wars this week and you should buy all of them from Troy. Kevin is all on top of Marvel's Secret Wars and Secret Wars has been a very entertaining read and I've been reading the whole thing all along. However, I would like to show you some of the other things that the other publishers have to offer, not least of which is the second issue of Brian K. Vaughn and Steve Scrochi on We Stand on Guard. This is issue number two. If you listened to me and picked up the first issue, you saw the beautiful artwork, the the missile strike, the United States launches missiles against Canada. World War III begins U.S. versus Canada. uh, That's a shock. That seems unlikely. You would think the Canadians would just be like, whoa, how about, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, (laughs) I'm sorry, how about we just talk about this a boot? Make Kayla do it. Kayla. Oh yeah, do the do, do your Canadian accident. Accident? Accent. I actually had one for like ten years. What? <laughs> My yeah, goodness. Yeah. So so yeah, we we would uh, you know they would just be you know. My family has property in Canada. Like I'm part Canadian, basically. You so, part Canadian? Yeah. I go up every. Which summer. part? That's why I'm leaving this week. The maple part. N- um, Ontario, Thousand Islands area. It's very vacationy. It's All very right. Nice. It's very pretty. All Thank right. you, Canada Tourism Board. All right. Now, <laughs> next up. Okay, Dynamite oh, Entertainment, like ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Conan Red Sonia. Okay, this is not the first Red, time Red Sonia that Conan hot. and Red Sonia have been together in a book. Certainly in the Marvel days, yeah. Red Sonia made her earliest appearances in the pages of Conan. True that. Uh, they have had crossovers in certainly the Savage Sword days, but this is another Red Sonia Conan, another Dynamite Dark Horse crossover. Conan is currently a Dark Horse property. Red Sonia is currently a Dynamite property, and this thing is beautiful here. Show them, show them, show them the page. Show them the page. So she actually has like no armor on. Like that's like completely inefficient. It's, right? You know, it's it's a scale male bikini, and and Kayla, really, if you want to be, you know, really serious about your cosplay, I think you should look into this. <laughs> I just did Arkham Asylum Poison Ivy. I'm pretty. Right, sure. So it's not a stretch from what what, what you're no, used to. This is a legitimate bikini. At least Poison Ivy has like a. 
cardigan covering <laughs> most of the top. Not much. Not oh, much. my goodness. But, like, most. So, here we are again, ladies and gentlemen, in the Hyborian Age. We have our two barbarian sword slingers, uh, Conan uh, the Sumerian, sullen-eyed, dark-haired, trotting the jeweled crowns of Hyperborea beneath his uh, sandaled feet, and Red Sonia, she devil with a sword, enough said there. It sounds uh, like you've read the, the, the novels. Uh, I have, in Okay. Fact. Yeah, I all right. have. Um, and I love them, and I have enjoyed both of these comics from their respective publishers, and I'm certain I'm going to enjoy this one, too. Now, moving along, this is the third story arc in The Fuse. This is issue number... 13. 13. Thank you very much. Um, I have enjoyed our buddy cop procedural drama set on a space station all along now, and uh, I'm continuing to enjoy it... Uh, yeah. Troy, why is this called The Fuse? What's The Fuse? Uh, the Fuse is the space station. There's this big multinational space station. Uh, think Fusion. Okay. Uh, and it is, well, you could also think Short Fuse. I mean, there's more than one allegory that you can make here. All right. There is a ticking time bomb of political intrigue and corruption. Uh, there are, you know... People from different nations, uh, Russians, Germans, Americans, uh, Orient, uh, Asians, et cetera, et cetera, all living in, sometimes the spaces are very lavish, sometimes the spaces are very cramped and uh, very and, and poverty stricken. But what are they, uh, what, what are you when you're in the space latrine? Uh, about to be flushed. European, come on, oh. come on, Troy. I just set that up for you. Are I you was. Done? Yeah, yeah. Done with that. Is he really? I, I, I gave that. That was for Mark's benefit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Did you make that joke? You've never heard it before. <laughs> What? I had heard it before. Come on. That's, that's older than me. It's just barely. All right. All right. Moving on here. Image Comics. Ed Brubaker, killer Brubaker. of Captain America, as, along uh, among other things. Uh, hey, hey. He's back now. And Sean Phillips. Uh, also, uh, they work together on uh, Criminal and Fatal. Right. Uh, and here they are on... Fade Out, issue number eight. This is a fantastic Hollywood murder mystery. It has an interesting ensemble cast of characters. Uh, they're very much Hollywood archetypes. Think the golden age of Hollywood. Think the 1920s. Uh, think the beautiful starlet found murdered in her room. Uh, think the guy who wakes up from an alcohol-soaked haze, wondering what in the heck just happened. Somebody covered that murder up, and he doesn't know who covered it up or why. Um, and is, is this a limited series, or is is this an ongoing? Uh, it's been ongoing now for eight issues, but I believe it will have a finite end. Uh, that seems to be the strength that uh, these two guys have had with their with their stories. Yeah, uh, they bring it to a pinnacle. But there is, if you read the books, if you uh, go into the back the uh, the back of the book here, yeah, there's always at least a two or three page essay uh, from Brew Baker on an allegorical, a real-life Hollywood scandal that is relevant to what's going on in the issue itself. Cool. Uh, so, yes, it absolutely is. And uh, those are only available in the single issues. They are not available in the trade paperback collection. So if you want to read Brubaker's stuff, uh, you're going to have to pick the singles up while it's new and dropping. Right on. Yeah, I only bought the first one, so I, I, I guess I'm going to have to go back and get these eventually. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe even as soon as this weekend. So, Troy, the, the, your final pick for this week, do they live inside of your head? Uh, they come to me in my bed, etc. Okay, J. Michael Straczynski, we mentioned him a little earlier here, uh, the Joe's Comics imprint of, uh, you know, Cup of Joe uh, from uh, Image Comics here. Finally, we have it back. It's the Dream Police. Uh, and I have been anticipating this. I've been waiting and waiting. I'm like, where is my Dream Police? I'm starting to lose the story threads in my head. Now i got to back up and reread the previous issues. Ooh, Remember yeah, where we that. left off. Um, Remember where we left off with the cop who was having dreams, but the dream police aren't supposed to dream. Wow. Yeah. You know, the stalking, the nightmares, and the figments, and yeah, there's a whole lot going on there. I'm going to have
have to back up and reread some of this stuff as we get what I believe we're getting closer to the climax here. Um, I don't know how far Straczynski intends to see this through, but man, I am so. I do love me some JMS. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are you know there are people who actually like Babylon Five out there. They exist, Troy. I don't know. Who uh, I was they one are. of them. But oh, that's that was you. You were his fan. Oh. But he's got, he does. But the, my point is, he does really great when when it comes to comic books. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, um, indeed. Just not necessarily Babylon Five, because what? Oh, come on now, <laughs> come on. So so this week, like I say, uh, in part two, we're gonna talk all about what we did at uh, at, at at Wizard World Richmond, uh, as well as uh, what's going on in the geek pop culture world. Yes, indeed. Anything anything else you want to talk about, comic wise, Troy? Uh, not at the moment, no. Uh, that's gonna t- do it for here. Uh, certainly, when we have had a chance to sit down, I've done a lot of back issue reading. Uh, I had some time to get caught up and push ahead on some things. Cool. Uh, I actually sat down and reread the Princess Leia five issue series from beginning to end in one sitting instead of piecemealed over five months. I, I, I saw somebody cosplaying as the uh, the other Alderanian woman uh, from the Princess Leia miniseries. I don't remember. Yeah, her I, I, name. I can't remember her name right now, and it's just that fresh in my mind. But the X Wing pilot. The X Wing pilot. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, that, I was like, that's, you know, kind of a narrow focus and, and fairly recent. I thought that, that was, was a cool. really good story, yeah. actually. If you've not taken the moment to check it out, perhaps you should go into your boxes and No, no, I've got, I've, I think I've you've got, got I've, them. I've got at least three or four of them. It well, was there five were issues? Only five, okay. yes. I might so, not uh, have the final issue yet. Yeah, well. They might be in my box right over there. Right over there, yeah. Yeah, you got about a long box worth of stuff. Hmm. <laughs> So, it's uh, not that much, but it's a lot. It's too much. I haven't bought comics since before Comic Con, and I'm like, whoa, kind of sweating it. I know. We got to do something about that. Uh, I, the comics I bought two weeks ago. I haven't had time to read them. I haven't even touched them. They're sitting in my car, fresh I, in the bag. I read Sentinel. So, uh, Alana, thank you. I've, you're, you're the first comic I've read in like a month. I want to read that. That actually it's looks good. really it's, I, I, uh, it's I'm over not even here joking. under my hand. Okay, okay, but I'm going to have to read it too. Uh, at some point in time. <laughs> oh, you read comics fast. It's a bit sword and so- sorcery. So even if you're not into uh, your your anthropomorphism, um, the the sword and sorcery aspect of it, if that appeals to you, check it out for real. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you're gonna find it, but we will put we will give you a link down below. And uh, speaking of links down below, uh, now is almost the time for you to click the link to part two. We'll see you there. Yes, indeed. From leaping tall builders to going off like gamma bombs. Switch your internet browser to comicsonline.com.